although I think it's useful to see how to do this hypothesis test by making the different score column ourselves, Jump has a faster way to work with these types of data. Instead of going to Distribution, we can go to Analyze Matched Pairs. The Matched Pairs platform is specifically suited to looking at pre and post changes. In this case, we put the paired responses as separate columns in the Y role. In this case, we put placebo and treatment as both the Y paired response. When we click OK, Jump will give us a special type of output, the matched pairs output. Before we interpret the graphic, let's look at our statistics. Again, we have the observed mean difference. Notice the value is identical. Jump is in fact doing the identical analysis. This is just a platform set up to take those columns by default. We also have our estimated standard error, our T-ratio, our degrees of freedom, and our two-tailed p-value, all of which are identical. Remember, we can always make a decision based on our p-value. If our p-value is less than our standard of evidence, less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis and say the result is statistically significant. If our p-value were to be greater than alpha, we would fail to reject the null, or we can say we retain the null. But let's go back and look at this particular graphic, because this shows us something pretty interesting. On the x-axis, we're looking at the mean for each individual of treatment plus placebo over two, that is, just their average blood pressure. On the y-axis, we're looking at the difference score for each individual. So this individual here had a low blood pressure on treatment and placebo, that is, on average, they were pretty low on both. This individual also experienced a pretty large difference between placebo and difference. What this graphic is useful for looking at is whether people who started off higher experienced more or less effective treatment. This is often the case when we're looking at things like weight loss studies. Individuals who start off higher, that is have more weight to lose, will typically get more of a difference. So what you'll typically find in situations like that is a linear pattern. That is, individuals who start off lower can't experience as much change, but the individuals who started off higher, or on average were heavier, would have more change. So you can often look for a pattern in your data. In this case, it looks like individuals had a relatively uniform effect. On average, the difference score was about 4.88, and people, even if they started low or high, seem to experience about the same amount of difference on average. Now, although you can perform the same hypothesis test by making the difference scores yourself, I would recommend using the matched pairs platform. This platform gives you more options and you get this particular plot that lets you identify whether individuals experience the same amount of effect depending on where they started. Either way, you'll make the decision the same way. Performing your hypothesis test always yields a p-value, and if your p-value is less than alpha, that's when you get to reject the null hypothesis. So going forward, for our dependent measures t-test, I would recommend using Analyze Matched Pairs.